Good evening, all of you. On behalf of Professional Development Committee of the Western India Regional Council, the Institute of Cost Accountants of India, I welcome all of you for the today's webinar series on intricacies of cost audit and cost record rules on different sector. Our today's session is on engineering sector. Our today's speaker is CMA Amit Apteser. He is a former president of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India for the year 2018 and 19 and mentor, registered valuer of Western India Regional Council, the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. Sir has over 26 years of post qualification experience in the field of costing, MIS, finance and accounts, and ERP system implementation. He's, he was a chairman of Western India Regional Council in 2010 and 2010-11. Sir was a central council member of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India for the term 2011 to 2019. He is a director of Levere Consultants Private Limited and Levere Info Solutions Private Limited. Also partners of Joshi Apte and Associates, a firm of practicing cost accountant. Sir is a member of Independent Evaluation Committee constituted by IBA under RBS framework of revitalizing distressed assets in the economy. Sir is a member of RBA Committee on Cost of Government Banking, received special acknowledgement of efforts and contribution, also secured All India Ranking in the uh, ICMAI CMA final examination. Also, to, uh, sir has taught Pune University in Diploma in Taxation Laws Examination. He's a qualified company secretary. Also has a global exposure of three years overseas stints in UAE and Egypt. Sir has completed independent treks to several Himalayan destinations, including Mount Everest Base Camp. Sir has represented state level and meritorious performance at table tennis tournaments. I welcome, sir. <laughs> and now I request, sir, to kindly start the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pujanka. Thank you, sir. Uh, you are able to see my screen, right? Yes, sir. OK. So I will begin with uh, congratulating WRC and uh, Arindam in particular for uh, initiating this uh, specific series on the intricacies of uh, cost audit and the cost record rules in uh, various different industries. Um, now the topic which has been given to me is uh, cost audit and cost record rules in engineering sector. So I will come to that uh, later. Uh, I can see from the list of attendees, uh, some of uh, the members who are attending are quite senior, uh, qualified and also uh, in the field of cost audit for quite, a, quite some time. Uh, and also there seem to be a few newcomers uh, who are attending this session. So before I go to the uh, topic of intricacies, uh, I will uh, run you through a few slides, which uh, will give us the history of uh, cost audit and uh, the basic rules which uh, they stand as on date. So uh, many of us may be aware that uh, the concept of cost audit was uh, introduced for the first time in the Companies Act 1956, uh, way back in 1965. And uh, so the, the enabling clauses in the Companies Act 1956 were uh, Section 2091D for the cost accounting and record rules and uh, Section 233B uh, for the cost audit. So both these clauses were inserted uh, in the act uh, in 1965. Um, over a period from 1965 till 2011, as many as 44 industries got covered under the ambit of uh, maintenance of cost records and cost audit, uh, one after the other. Uh, 
one peculiarity uh, of the cost records and cost audit at that time used to be that for each industry which uh, which got prescribed under record maintenance and cost audit uh, the ministry used to publish the uh, cost accounting record rules for that respective industry uh, so it was that for each and every 44 of those industries there there were uh, cost record rules for each of those 44 industries the uh, formats for the records were also prescribed by the ministry uh, and uh, so industry specific uh, records used to be maintained and the uh, cost audit orders uh, were always issued to individual companies so it was not across the board so exactly similar companies uh, in a sector which was uh, covered <clears throat> it was not necessary that uh, both the companies were covered under cost audit also there used to be a physical submission of cost audit reports to the uh, cost audit branch and that used to be uh, quite a Herculean task because product wise cost sheets were required to be maintained, audited and uh, product wise cost sheets used to be submitted uh, to the uh, cost audit branch of the government. Uh, this used to be a challenge. Uh, just, just a minute here. Yeah. Um, please ex excuse me for just a minute. I need to close the main door of my office. <laughs> Sorry for that. <clears throat> it's a weekend and my office has already shut down. I must talk to Arindam that uh, he has given me two sessions. This is my second session and both have been on Saturday, uh, 7 to 9. So my weekends uh, need to be planned accordingly. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, in the year 2011, uh, the rules and the uh, reporting formats were simplified. Uh, there were a lot of concerns uh, given by the industry and all those concerns were addressed. Uh, the applicability remained uh, industry wise, but the submission of uh, the cost audit report was done in the XBRL format. Also product wise cost sheets were no longer required to be submitted. And one of the biggest change uh, which happened in 2011 was that instead of rule based uh, records, principle based uh, rules were uh, form formed and they became applicable across the board for all the industries which got covered. Uh, the Companies Act 2013 uh, came into picture after these 2011 amendments and uh, the Act retained the provisions relating to the maintenance of cost records and uh, cost audit. And all those provisions are under section 148 of the act. And uh, once the new companies act 2013 uh, came into uh, existence, naturally the earlier rules became defunct and the new rules were also framed uh, under the act. I'm not getting into the details of, there were some controversies at that time, but uh, finally in 2014, the rules uh, were notified under the new Companies Act 2013 and the rules which we see today are more or less uh, in the same, same line. Some modifications, some amendments have been done since 2014, but more or less there is no major change in the rules. So uh, what is the basic difference between a cost audit and a financial audit? Uh, a quick uh, analysis of that. So uh, we all understand that the cost audit can be performed uh, by a practicing cost accountant and uh, the financial audit can be performed only by a practicing chartered accountant. Uh, 
Um, also, the cost audit is the examination of the correctness of the, the cost statements that have been maintained by the company and its conformity with the cost accounting principles. Uh, when I say cost accounting principles, the institute has prescribed the generally accepted cost accounting principles and they have also come up with various cost accounting standards. Uh, however, <coughs> The uh, cost record and the cost audit rules uh, have prescribed the uh, maintenance of uh, cost records, uh, specifically in format CRA1, which is more or less very similar to the various cost accounting standards and the generally cost accounting principles that are uh, in vogue. Uh, the appointment of the cost auditor uh, is one topic which, which uh, has been represented several times, uh, that it is being done by the board of directors uh, of the company. Whereas in case of the financial audit, it is always done by the shareholders in, in the general body meeting. Um, as a part of the cost audit, it is the uh, duty of the, uh, to analyze the various uh, cost records, cost statement, uh, and the cost accounts. Uh, whereas the financial audit focuses more on the financial statements and the documents and vouchers. Uh, the uh, efficiency of the operations and the propriety of the actions of the management is the key focus area as far as cost audit is concerned. Whereas the financial audit uh, primarily focuses on the compliance with the cost accounting standards and the effectiveness of the overall internal audit system uh, or the internal control system. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, financial audit is mandatory for all the companies, whereas uh, cost audit uh, is specified only to certain uh, industries and that also based on the turnover criteria. And uh, finally, the, uh, similar to the appointment of the auditor, the uh, report is submitted to the board of directors. Uh, and which in turn, uh, the, it's the responsibility of the company to submit it to the government. Whereas in case of uh, financial audit, uh, the uh, audit report is submitted to the shareholder or presented before the shareholders. Uh, now, what are the uh, threshold limits for applicability of uh, maintenance of cost records and the cost audit? So uh, the rules have bifurcated the various industries into uh, two specific uh, sectors. One is the regulator sector and the other is the non-regulated sector. So uh, if uh, there is an industry uh, which is falling under the regulated sector and the gross turnover of the company is uh, more than 35 crores in the previous year, uh, then the maintenance of cost records uh, is applicable provided it is manufacturing uh, goods or rendering services which are covered under the listed sectors. Um, the provision of cost audit, uh, oh, sorry, the provision of uh, maintenance is exactly the same for non-regulated sectors as well. Uh, however, in case of cost audit, there is some difference. In case of the regulated sectors, the gross turnover of the companies uh, should be more than 50 crores for the previous year. And the turnover of individual products or services which are covered uh, for maintenance of cost records uh, should be in excess of 25 crores. For non-regulated uh, sectors, uh, however, the gross turnover of the company should be 100 crores in the previous year and the turnover of individual products or services which, which are covered under maintenance of cost records uh, should be 35 crores. Uh, now, which are the uh, various uh, industries uh, which are getting covered under uh, maintenance of cost records and, and the cost audit? Uh, now, before we come to that, there, there are a couple of uh, specific exemptions. Uh, the first, first exemption being the micro uh, enterprises and the small enterprises are exempt from maintaining of the cost records. Uh, also, uh, foreign companies uh, having only liaison offices in, in India are uh, exempt from maintenance of cost records. Uh, as far as cost audit is concerned, uh, the companies whose revenues uh, from exports uh, 
uh, in foreign exchange exceeds 75 percent of the total revenue or companies operating from scz are exempt from cost audit however these companies are required to maintain cost records uh, similarly companies which are engaged in uh, generation of electricity for captive consumption uh, through a captive uh, power generating plant uh, are also exempt from cost audit uh, now here is a list of the uh, various industries which are covered under uh, the record rules and the cost audit mechanism uh, we have already discussed the threshold limit for the of the turnovers uh, and he, the list is uh, given here so these are the six regulated sectors uh, which include the telecom services the generation transmission distribution of uh, power then the uh, petroleum products drugs and pharmaceuticals fertilizers sugar and industrial alcohol as far as the non regulated sectors are concerned uh, there is a list of 33 various industries or uh, sectors uh, which includes the machinery and mechanical appliances uh, used in defense space and atomic uh, energy sectors um, turbo jets and the turbo propellants the arms and ammunitions the propellant powders and uh, various explosives safety fuses detonating fuses etc radius apparatus uh, radio navigational aid apparatus i will quickly run you through this because uh, uh, we all know the list so tanks uh, Port services, aeronautical services, steel, road and other infrastructure projects, rubber and allied projects, coffee and tea, railway or tram, cement, various minerals and ores, mineral fuels, base metals, inorganic chemicals, organic and inorganic compounds, jute, uh, edible oil, construction industry, health industry educational services milk powder insecticides plastic and polymers tires and tubes uh, and so on and so forth <clears throat> uh, in serial number 13 uh, sorry 33 of the uh, non regulated industry they have also covered uh, certain items uh, which get covered uh, even if they are not manufactured uh, in in india uh, and just traded or imported and uh, traded uh, these are all the medical devices that have been listed so the, for the first time the medical devices uh, are covered under the ambit of record maintenance and the cost audit now if you look at the list of the regulated sectors as well as the non-regulated sectors. So six plus 33. Uh, as I said, the topic which has been given to me talks about uh, the engineering sector. So uh, which according to you uh, can, can we consider under the engineering sector per se? Uh, can you uh, type out a few examples uh, in the uh, chat box? Any one of you? Serial number 31. Okay, so that is the other machinery. What else? That's all. Yes, engineering is mostly covered under sec uh, serial number 31. That is the HSN code which starts from 84. Okay. So 84 is basically the uh, other machinery. What else? Thirty two as well. So, so that is the uh, electrical and electronic machinery. Fine. Anything else? Anikindi sir says steel. Okay.
okay fine so uh, i what i did was i looked out uh, at the various uh, engineering uh, forms of engineering and there appears to be eight main types of engineering uh, industries uh, this is this is uh, just the googling which i did uh, when i prepared for today's program so uh, mechanical engineering chemical engineering electrical engineering civil aerospace environmental biomedical and software now if you look at these uh, practically uh, except for maybe uh, software engineering uh, rest of the streams of engineering uh, are being catered to by some uh, sector which is covered or the other so uh, <laughs> definitely uh, that that is not the intention uh, of wrc uh, when they have given me the engineering sector per se right so i looked at the encyclopedia as well and encyclopedia uh, basically covers uh, uh, two different terminologies so one says that uh, the engineering can take a variety of forms one is the civil military or mechanical and it also says that the term engineering industry is normally used in a more limited sense to describe the industries uh, devoted to manufacture of engines machine tools and machinery so uh, it talks about uh, the various machines engines and civil civil kind of uh, uh, engineering services uh, so uh, i have i have made a Uh, comparison between a typical manufacturing industry and what can be termed as a uh, engineering industry uh, now now typically i have done this uh, bifurcation because i wanted to focus only on certain categories or certain types of uh, uh, industries in today's session uh, so i have i have tried to compare the manufacturing industry with the engineering industry uh, now if you look at it the uh, manufacturing industry typically can be considered as a mass production of tangible goods such as automobiles pharma electric electronic uh, devices or uh, fmcg goods uh, fmcg products and uh, the engineering industry requires uh, designing construction maintenance of uh, infrastructure and uh, various large machines so uh, the focus of today's discussion will be uh, large projects or large uh, 